Hey, this is Nicholas. Today we're talking about the category herbs that dispel wind dampness, also known as herbs that treat bee syndrome. As always, we'll start with an overview of the category, talking about what is bee syndrome and discussing the properties of the category as a whole. Then we'll go over each of the individual herbs in detail. And finally, we'll do a brief summary and comparison of the herbs. The audio portion of this lecture can be downloaded for free at tcmstudy.net under the Herbology 2 tab. There, you can also find lecture slides with photos if you want to follow along, and there's a practice test you can take afterwards. But let's go ahead and get started. So the official name of this category is Herbs That Dispel Wind Dampness, but what we're really talking about here is something called Bee Jung, or Bee Syndrome. Bee Jung is sometimes translated as Impediment Syndrome, or Painful Obstruction Syndrome. The idea here is there's a wind-cold damp pathogen that invades the body and impedes or obstructs the normal flow of qi through the channels, causing pain, aching, heaviness, numbness, or inhibited bending and stretching of the joints. This is similar to a Western diagnosis of arthritis, but can also include things like low back pain, spondylosis, sciatica, or even gout. So maybe what we can point out here is that this is different than acute pain due to injury and trauma that we would categorize more as chi and blood stagnation. For B syndrome, think about the patient that they can tell when it's going to rain because their joints start aching, or someone with an old knee injury that flares up whenever the weather is cold and damp. That's a sign that the chi of the environment, a wind-cold damp pathogen, is invading the body, causing pain. So even though the books call this category herbs that dispel wind dampness, it might be easier and more straightforward to just call it herbs that treat B syndrome, because that's what we're treating, B syndrome. So there are several categories of B syndrome, but for now, maybe we can just keep it simple and say that the type of B syndrome will depend on which pathogen is predominant. So B syndrome is normally caused by a combination of wind, cold, and dampness. But if wind is the predominant evil, then the pain will move around from one place to another, because you know, the nature of wind is to move. So it might be that one day they come in with pain in the shoulder, next day it's pain in the hip, next it's pain in the low back. And this is called wind bee or xing bee, which means moving bee, walking bee, or wandering bee. When cold predominates, the pain will be more intense. The limbs will feel cold and the pain will be relieved by warmth. This is called cold bee or tong bee, painful bee. When dampness predominates, the pain will be in a fixed location, the body will feel heavy, and the joints will be swollen. Remember, dampness causes feelings of heaviness. This is called damp bee or jiao bee, fixed bee. And then a fourth type, if these pathogens stagnate long enough, or if the person has an overabundance of yang qi, then the evil can transform into heat. This is called zhe bee or hot bee. Here, the joints will be red, swollen, painful, and warm to the touch, like with rheumatoid arthritis. And besides the different types of bee syndrome, we also have different strategies for treating bee syndrome. We can dispel when damp and basically push the pathogen out. Herbs with this action are usually very good at stopping pain. We can also relax the sinews and unblock the channels. This is for numbness and tingling due to wind blocking the channels or for inhibited bending and stretching of the joints due to hypertonicity of the sinews. Or we can tonify liver and kidney yin to strengthen tendon and bone. The liver governs the tendons and the kidney governs the bones. So that's why we say tonify liver and kidney in to strengthen tendon and bone. This is useful for long-standing chronic conditions, usually in debilitated or elderly patients characterized by weakness, deficiency, and atrophy. So when you go through the individual herbs, these are things we'll wanna pay attention to. Does it treat a particular type of bee syndrome like hot bee or cold bee? By which way does it treat bee syndrome? Does it dispel when damp? Does it relax the sinews? Or does it strengthen tendon and bone? And does it treat bee syndrome in a particular area of the body? Some herbs are better for the upper body, some herbs are better for the lower body, some herbs are better for the extremities, and so on. In terms of general properties, herbs that treat bee syndrome tend to be warm, acrid, and bitter. And this should make sense. Since we're dealing with a wind-cold damp pathogen, we use the acrid flavor to disperse the wind, warm to deal with cold, and bitter to dry the dampness. But this isn't always going to be the case. For example, herbs that treat hot bee are going to be cold in temperature, 
or herbs that tonify liver and kidney yin are going to be sweet in flavor. In terms of entering channels, these herbs tend to enter the liver and kidney channels because the liver governs the sinews and the kidney governs the bones. So you can maybe think that we're dealing with joint pain and the joints are where the tendons and bones come together and that's where this pathogen is lurking in the joints at the level of the sinews and bones. So that's why we say liver and kidney. In terms of administration, some of these herbs can be prepared as a tincture by soaking them in alcohol, or they can be ground into a powder and swallowed with alcohol as a single herb. Remember, alcohol can enhance the analgesic or pain relieving properties of certain herbs, or you can just remember that alcohol goes to the liver, which is what we want. Any cautions or contraindications we should pay attention to? These herbs tend to be warm, acrid, and even aromatic in nature, which means they can be very drying. So we have to use caution in patients with yin or blood deficiency. So let's go ahead and talk about the individual herbs. In terms of organizing these herbs, Bensky just gives us one long list of herbs that treat B syndrome, but other books will organize them differently. For example, Weissman and Brand divide them up into herbs for cold B, hot B, and sinew bone strengthening herbs. Chen and Chen divide them up more based on treatment principle, herbs that dispel wind damp and stop pain, herbs that unblock the channels and relax the sinews, and herbs that strengthen tendon and bone. I tend to go with the last one just because that's the way I learned it, but just realize that there is some overlap. A lot of these herbs treat bee syndrome in more than one way. First we have Du Huo, Angelica pubescentis radix. Du Huo. Du Huo treats bee syndrome using our first treatment strategy. Du Huo dispels wind cold damp to treat bee syndrome. It can be used for both acute and chronic conditions, but specialty is treating bee syndrome in the lower body, that is, the low back and the legs. And maybe you can remember this because we have another herb with Huo in the name that also treats bee syndrome, Qiang Huo from the category Warm Acrid Herbs That Release the Exterior. Qiang Huo is better for bee syndrome in the upper body, Du Huo is better for bee syndrome in the lower body. And similar to Qiang Huo, Du Huo also releases the exterior for external attack of wind cold with dampness. So this would be fever and chills and a floating pulse with additional signs of dampness, like joint pain and body ache. In this situation, it's common to use Du Huo and Qiang Huo together, and that combination is called Er Huo, the two Huos. If anything, number three, Du Huo can treat Shaoyin headache and Toothache. Du Huo is warm, acrid, and bitter. Like we said before, since we're dealing with wind cold dampness, these herbs tend to be acrid to disperse wind, warm to disperse cold, and bitter to dry dampness. Du Huo enters the kidney and UB channels, since these are the channels that govern the low back and the legs. Some books will also say it enters the liver channel as well. In terms of cautions and contraindications, Du Huo is very drying in nature, so use caution in cases of yin deficiency or blood deficiency. The character Du means alone or independent, so Du Huo means independent existence. This is referring to the plant. It has a strong stalk that's not easily shaken or swayed by the wind. So maybe you can think that Du Huo will give you a strong body or a strong low back that won't sway easily with wind invasion. Or you can think that it smells like angel pubes, because, you know, Angelica pubescentis. Next is Wei Ling Xian, Clematidus radix. Wei Ling Xian. Wei Ling Xian dispels wind cold damp, unblocks the channels, and alleviates pain. Wei Ling Xian is often described as being very piercing, penetrating, and mobilizing, so it's very good for treating pain conditions due to wind. For low back pain, Wei Ling Xian can be taken as a single herb by grinding it into a powder and swallowing with warm alcohol. It's so good at relieving pain, it can also be used to treat knocks and falls or headache and toothache. Just be careful not to use Wei Ling Xian long term as its yang nature can be very drying and it can exhaust qi. And then another funny action of Wei Ling Xian is that it softens fish bones for bones stuck in the throat. So that's why it's marked salty in flavor, because it softens hardness, as in fish bones. However, some sources say that Wei Ling Xian doesn't actually dissolve the fish bone, it just relaxes the throat muscles so that the bone is easier to swallow. And number three, Wei Ling Xian can treat epigastric pain due to phlegm in the middle jowl. And that's another reason it's marked salty in flavor, because it can disperse abdominal masses and clumps. 
So Wei Ling Xian is warm and acrid because it has the piercing, mobilizing nature. It both releases the exterior and promotes movement through the channels to treat B syndrome. And both of those actions are associated with the acrid flavor. And then Wei Ling Xian is salty because it softens fish bones and it softens abdominal masses. The name Wei Ling Xian means awesome spirit immortal. I don't know if that has any significance, but it sounds pretty cool. Next is Hai Tong Pi, Erythrin Eye Cortex. Hai Tong Pi. Hai Tong Pi is another one that dispels wind cold damp to treat B syndrome and also unblocks the channels. And it's another one that's useful for the lower body, like pain in the low back and knees. What's special about Hai Tong Pi is that it's good for dampness, for things like gout. And it's also neutral in temperature, so it can be used for both heat and cold conditions. Hai Tong Pi also promotes urination to treat superficial edema, which is another way it deals with dampness. The word pi means skin or peel or bark, and since this is the skin of a tree, it treats edema under the skin. So Hai Tong Pi makes you pee. And Hai Tong Pi can be used externally to treat certain skin problems like itchiness and scabies. Scabies is a type of rash caused by microscopic mites burrowing into the skin. Like we said, Hai Tong Pi is neutral in temperature. It's bitter and acrid, acrid to dispel wind and unblock the channels, and bitter to deal with dampness. Dampness in the joints, dampness causing edema, or dampness on the skin. Hai Tong Pi enters the liver, spleen, and kidney channels. Liver and kidney channels because it treats B syndrome, and spleen channel because of the dampness. As for the name, Hai Tong is just the name of the plant, so Hai Tong Pi means ocean tree bark. The next one we'll just mention briefly is hugu, which is tiger bone. Hugu. Obviously, we don't use hugu anymore. It's been moved to a special category called obsolete substances. But we'll just mention it briefly here, just so you have some knowledge of how it was traditionally used. Tiger bone is very warm and yang in nature. In treating bee syndrome, it doesn't just dispel wind. Instead, we go further to say that hugu seeks out or tracks down wind. So it's especially useful for wind-predominant bee that moves from place to place. Besides that, hugu is bone, so it's good for strengthening tendon and bone, especially in cases of atrophy. The way to take hugu is usually not by boiling it in a decoction. Rather, it's soaked in alcohol to make a tincture. There's one famous preparation called hugu muguajo, where hugu is soaked in alcohol with the next herb in this category, mugua, as well as other herbs that strengthen tendon and bone. So that's hugu and its medicinal purpose. Next, we get into our herbs that unblock the channels and relax the sinews, starting with mugua, Chinomelis fructus, mu, gua. So because mugua unblocks the channels and relaxes the sinews, that makes it especially useful for muscle spasm and cramping pain, for things like TMJ, jaw pain, abdominal cramps, and cramping in the leg. And besides that, mugua also transforms milk chow dampness for things like nausea and diarrhea. So if we put those two functions together, that makes mugua especially useful for sudden turmoil disorder with abdominal cramping. Basically, vomiting and diarrhea, and you're vomiting so much that it gives you abdominal cramps. Mugua enters the liver and spleen channels, which makes sense. It enters the liver channel because it relaxes the sinews, and it enters the spleen channel because it transforms dampness to treat diarrhea. And mugua is marked sour in flavor. Now some people will say that mugua is sour because it binds up the intestines to stop diarrhea, but others will say that the sour flavor doesn't really have anything to do with any astringent action. Instead, they say the reason we mark it sour is because it strongly enters the liver channel to relax the sinews. As for the name, mu means wood and Gua means melon, so mu gua is wood melon. So maybe because it has wood in the name, that can make you think of the wood element, and it can remind you that mu gua is sour in flavor, that it strongly enters the liver channel, and that it relaxes the sinews. Next is tsan sha, bombicus feces. Tsan sha. Tsan sha is silkworm feces, and it's very similar to mu gua. It dispels when damp and relaxes the sinews to treat bee syndrome, and it also transforms nil jowl dampness to treat vomiting and diarrhea, so they're often used together. 
And because this one also dispels wind dampness, it can also be used for itchy rashes due to wind damp. So Sancha enters the liver channel because it treats bee syndrome, and it enters the spleen stomach channels because it transforms middle jowl dampness. The name means silkworm sand, but that's just a poetic way of saying silkworm feces. Next is Qin Jiao, Gentianae macrophylla erratix. Qin Jiao. Qin Jiao dispels when damp, unblocks the channels, and relaxes the sinews to treat bee syndrome. It's especially useful for bee syndrome and cramping in the extremities for things like frozen shoulder. And it's also slightly cold in temperature, so it's especially useful for hot bee syndrome. Besides treating bee syndrome, Qin Jiao also clears deficiency heat, treating steaming bone disorder. So we might see Qin Jiao used alongside other herbs that clear deficiency heat, herbs like Qing Hao and Di Gu Pi. Qin Jiao also treats jaundice due to damp heat, especially acute cases in infants. And if anything, number four, Qin Jiao moistens the large intestine to treat constipation. Now, you might not use Qin Jiao by itself for this purpose, but the reason this stands out is most of the herbs in this category are very drying in nature, whereas Qin Jiao has a moistening ability. So you might use Qin Jiao to counteract the drying properties of some of the other herbs in this category. So the thing you probably want to remember about Qin Jiao is that it's slightly cold in temperature. That means Qin Jiao is good for hot bee, it clears deficiency heat, and it treats damp heat jaundice. And besides the liver channel, it also enters the gallbladder channel because the gallbladder is related to jaundice. Next is Song Zhe, Mori Ramulus. Song Zhe. Song means mulberry and Zhe means twig, same as like Gui Zhe. So Song Zhe is mulberry twig. Song Zhe dispels wind, relaxes the sinews, and unblocks the channels to treat bee syndrome. So it treats muscle aches and pains, muscle spasms, and it benefits the joints, especially in the upper extremities. So you can maybe think that twigs are like the arms of a plant, so mulberry twig is for the arms of your body, for things like spasm in the limbs, pain and itching in the limbs, or even numbness and paralysis in the limbs after a stroke. Also, this is another one that's neutral or slightly cool in temperature, so it's good for warm type B syndromes. It also promotes urination to treat edema, especially when edema is causing joint pain, and it can lower high blood pressure. The dosage of Songjer is larger than average, 9 to 15 grams, or even up to 30 grams in some cases, like with post-stroke conditions. And this is just because Songjer is mild and slow to work, so we need a larger dosage. Songjer is neutral in temperature and bitter in flavor, so it's more likely to be used for bee syndrome caused by heat. So remember, Songjer is for warm bee and for the upper limbs. Next is Xi Xian Sao, Sigispecii Herba. Xi Xian Cao. Xi Xian Cao unblocks the channels to treat bee syndrome. It's cold in temperature, so it's good for a hot bee, and it's good for spasm, cramps, weakness, numbness, and paralysis in the extremities, including post stroke conditions. Xi Xian Cao also clears heat and subdues liver yang rising for things like headache and dizziness, and it also treats damp heat related skin problems like sores, rashes, and itchy skin. For this, it can be taken internally or applied topically. And Qi Xian Cao also lowers high blood pressure. And this might be weird, but I remember Xi Xian Cao because the name sounds a lot like Xia Ku Cao, which is another herb that clears liver heat, subdues liver yang rising, and lowers high blood pressure. And the dosage is slightly higher than average, 9 to 15 grams. Next is Bai Hua Shu, which is a type of snake. Bai Hua Shu. Bai Hua Shi literally means white flower snake, referring to the pattern on its scales. It's also called Qi Shi, after the Qi River in Hubei province, where the snake is often collected. So if you remember the category herbs that clear heat and resolve toxicity, we learned an herb called Bai Hua Shi Shi Cao, which means white flower snake tongue herb. Bai Hua Shi Shi Cao got its name because the leaves looked like the tongue of a snake. Well now, we're learning the actual snake. But besides the name, these two herbs have nothing in common. So Bai Hua Shi is a snake and it strongly unblocks the channels. This is another one that we can say it seeks out or tracks down wind. So you can think of a snake crawling through the channels, 
opening and unblocking them, and searching out the wind. Baihua Shu is good for numbness and weakness in the limbs, hemiplasia, and facial paralysis after a stroke. It treats convulsions, tremors, and seizures due to wind, and it can even dispel wind from the skin for numbness, itching, and rashes due to wind. So Baihua Shu is very strong and possibly toxic, so this is something that would be used more for stubborn cases or as a last resort when other, more gentle herbs have proven ineffective. The dosage of Bai Hua Shu is 3 to 9 grams in decoction, but you're probably more likely to see it used in pills or powders or soaked in alcohol as a tincture. Bai Hua Shu is salty in flavor because it's an animal, and it's toxic because it's a snake. Overdosing may cause side effects like dizziness, palpitation, coma, or death due to respiratory failure. But as long as you stay in the normal dosage range, there shouldn't be any problems. And then our last couple herbs belong to the subcategory herbs that tonify liver and kidney yin to strengthen tendon and bone, starting with sang ji sheng, taxili herba, sang ji sheng. Sang, again, means mulberry, so sang ji sheng means mulberry parasite. This is mistletoe, like what you hang up during Christmas. Now, I did not know this before, but apparently mistletoe is a parasitic plant that grows on trees, including mulberry trees. So Sang Ji Sheng tonifies liver and kidney yin to strengthen tendon and bone. The liver governs the tendons and the kidney governs the bones. So that's why we say it this way. Because it tonifies, that makes Sang Ji Sheng especially useful for B syndrome in elderly patients or for chronic cases due to deficiency, for things like low back pain, joint problems, numbness, weakness, and atrophy. Besides strengthening tendon and bone, Sang Ji Sheng also tonifies blood. It tonifies blood and benefits the skin, treating dry, scaly skin due to deficiency. It tonifies blood, treating insufficient lactation due to blood deficiency. And it calms restless fetus to prevent miscarriage, for stirring fetus or bleeding during pregnancy due to liver and kidney deficiency. If anything else, recent studies have shown that Sang Ji Sheng can lower high blood pressure, and some sources say it can lower high cholesterol as well. Sang Ji Sheng is sweet in flavor because it tonifies, but it's still bitter in flavor to deal with the dampness of wind cold damp. It enters the liver and kidney channels because it strengthens tendon and bone, and the dosage is a little higher than average, 9 to 15 grams. And our last herb is Wu Jia Pi. You might see this listed as Eleutherococci gracilis styli cortex or Acanthopinacus cortex, depending on the book. I usually go with the second one just because it's shorter. So again, the name is Wu Jia Pi. Wu Jia Pi also tonifies liver and kidney yin to strengthen tendon and bone. This makes it useful for B syndrome in elderly patients and also for impaired motor development in children. It's still warm, acrid, and bitter, so it still dispels wind cold damp. It's just that it's especially useful when there's a background of deficiency, like weak or soft sinews and bones. Wu Jia Pi also promotes urination to treat edema, especially for edema under the skin. Again, Pi means bark or skin or peel. So since it's the skin of the tree, it's good for edema under the skin. Or you can just remember that Wu Jia Pi sounds like Wu Jia Pi, so it promotes urination. The name means five additions bark. Now, I don't really know what that name means, but maybe it can remind you that Wu Jia Pi treats five delay syndrome or delayed development in children. So that's it for herbs that dispel wind dampness or herbs that treat bee syndrome. Let's do a quick review. Du Huo expels wind cold damp to treat bee syndrome, especially for bee syndrome in the lower body. So Qiang Huo treats upper body bee, Du Huo treats lower body bee. Wei Ling Xian expels wind cold damp to treat bee syndrome and its specialty is stopping pain. This is the one that's salty in flavor because it softens fish bones and also reduces abdominal masses. Haitong Pi treats bee syndrome, but it's neutral in temperature, so it can be used for both hot and cold conditions. It promotes urination to treat edema, so Haitong Pi makes you pee, and it kills parasites and relieves itching. Hugu is tiger bone. It expels wind cold damp and tonifies liver and kidney yin to strengthen tendon and bone. Because it's an animal, it's salty in flavor, and it's usually soaked in alcohol and taken as a tincture. Mugua relaxes the sinews and unblocks the channels to treat bee syndrome, 
especially for cramping and spasm. It's sour in flavor because it strongly enters the liver channel, and it also transforms middle jiao dampness. San Sha is silkworm feces. Like Mu Gua, it relaxes the sinews and unblocks the channels to treat bee syndrome, and also transforms middle jiao dampness. Qin Jiao is the one that's slightly cold in temperature, so it treats hot bee, clears deficiency heat, and treats jaundice due to damp heat. Song Zhe is mulberry twig. It's a twig, so it's good for the upper extremities. Xi Xian Sao is especially good for post-stroke conditions. It unblocks the channels, clears liver heat, and subdues liver yang rising, and lowers high blood pressure. Bai Hua Shi is a snake. It seeks out and tracks down wind in the channels, so it's good for chronic and stubborn conditions. It's an animal, so it's salty in flavor, and it's usually soaked in alcohol and taken as a tincture. Sang Ji Sheng and Wu Jia Pi are the ones that tonify liver and kidney yin to strengthen tendon and bone. Sang Ji Sheng also tonifies blood, benefiting the skin and calming restless fetus. Wu Jia Pi also treats impaired motor development in children. And it promotes urination to treat edema. So Wu Jia Pi sounds like Wood Jia Pi. So that's it for the category Herbs That Dispel Wind Dampness. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to head over to the website tcmstudy.net and take the practice test. And a special thank you to the Patreon members. If you enjoy this content and get value out of it, consider supporting the site by joining the Patreon. Just head over to tcmstudy.net and click the Patreon link at the top. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, and see you next time.